Hello! Welcome back to part two of the diesel heater video. This video I'm going to be trying to answer some commenters questions and generally doing a bit more in-depth testing that I missed in the first video. So, the first important question that I missed out was fuel consumption. Because I wasn't really thinking about fuel consumption because that kind of thing wouldn't really bother me, if you know what I mean. I know it's not going to drink a whole tank of diesel in one night. But, as people are curious, it uses a max power, 250 millilitres per hour, and in its lowest power, which it is doing just now, I've got it set to its lowest setting, can you see, I don't want to press the thing, can you see on the thing that it's just got one dot lit up, which I think should be... Well, it went into that mode in about 15 degrees in the workshop, so I think that's about 15 degrees. It's gone really quiet. It's drawn less than an amp now. Uh, what was I going to say? And it used 25 millilitres of diesel in 15 minutes. So that's like uh, 100 millilitres an hour. Whatever that is in gallons for you American types. It doesn't really seem to matter if it's on its lowest setting or its high setting. The temperature output from here, which I've got a thermocouple poked in, is about 130 degrees. It goes down a little at max power. I know it doesn't make any sense, but it's blowing a lot harder. So although the temperature's dropped, it's still a lot. It's more throughput of heat for a slightly lower temperature. Does that make any sense? Uh, okay, and being on it's low setting just now. The temperature of the exhaust, can you see that? Oh, like that. That better. The temperature of the exhaust is now down to 100, 120, 130 degrees, which is the same temperature as the air output. So it's become a bit more efficient, I think. And let's see, we're just down at this end. So down at the cold end, it's, well, cold, well enough. I also didn't do this last time. Th these pipes, they don't get ridiculously hot there can it's hot but it's not you know oh my god it's burning it's melting my skin hot it's just hot so that was one of the main questions how much fuel does it use oh look I even wrote it down 25 mil 15 minutes exhaust temperature 115 outlet temperature 925 so that's question one another question was is this a speed controller or is it a temperature controller I'm going with temperature from this dude here which appears to be a thermistor because if I turn it up a notch another light on the thing it doesn't instantly get faster with a speed controller fan speed is now increasing slightly because I've asked it to go up a temperature I'll turn it back down again so no, that's a thermistor so it's temperature controlled it'll now have to come back down again the other question was, what happens if the battery voltage goes too low? Does it turn off? The answer is no. It will absolutely drain your battery all the way down. All the way, like, and it's, what is it, I think it was 6 volts. Anything less than 6 volts, it just stops dead. So there's 10. It's still good. Fan speed just come back up. So your battery would be dead and wrecked at the moment if we got it down to 7 volts. We'll take it down to 6. It's still going at 6. The fan's still running, the pump's still running, but at less than 6 it stops dead. There, it's turned off. It'll just stop, there's no like emergency thermal, oh my god it's going down to 10 volts. I'll shut down, run and cool myself down, nah it just stops. Will it run on kerosene? Yes. It's running away quite happily on kerosene. Temperature output appears to be the same. Exhaust temperatures, same as it was before. So, it'll quite happily run on kerosene. Someone did ask if it will run on paraffin. I don't know because the paraffin hasn't arrived in time. But I will put it on the website if, if when the paraffin eventually arrives. Now we'll run it on paraffin. 
but kerosene, absolutely no problem. Okay, another comparison is going to be running at maximum power, like it is just now, which shows ooh, 70 odd decibels, bearing in mind that we are this far away. I managed to get the fan not blowing on it this time. So that's max power. Oh, also, does the muffler make any difference? I'll let you hear this with my lapel mic. Muffler on. Muffler off. So yes, the silencer does make, well, silencer muffler does make a little bit of difference. Now, minimum power. Okay, so it's now in its low setting, which, depending on where I hold that, can be down at 60 odd decibels. Now, every 10 decibels is a doubling of volume, so it's half as loud as it was before. The only problem with this setup is the exhaust is in here with us. So if this was outside the vehicle, you wouldn't be able to hear that. You would just be hearing this bit, which is humming away quite quietly now because the fan's really slow. The pump's just barely ticking over. Still giving out hot air, but quietly. So if we could exclude the exhaust noise, it's actually pretty silent on low power mode. Will it run off a uh, lithium ion jump starter battery pack? with the jump leads. Well, I'm just using the jump leads to connect the wires just now. Controller's just disappeared. Will it start and will it run? Well, it's, it's powering it. It's definitely, it's lighting up. Now, let's see if it'll turn on. The old clamp meter in, see what's happening. Right, there's our 8 amps of uh, current pull to heat the glow plug up. Not sure if my battery bank will survive. Right, the pump started now. Ah, we've got the trickly light of there's not enough <laughs> voltage and current to power it. Okay, so that's a fail for this battery pack, at least. But, I think if you had a bigger battery pack, it would absolutely start it and run it, because, you know, it's for jump starting a car, for, I know it's only 200, 300 amps for a brief second, but 10 amps over a couple of minutes shouldn't be much of a problem, and to run it. The only problem you will face will be is when the battery pack gets low, as we know, this just runs until it murders batteries and stops and the battery packs most of them all got protection in them so if they run down below the batteries safe voltage they just stop dead which means this unit will just stop dead if it's hot possible risk of fire things like that if it's hot and the plastic's running and I don't think it will go on fire because it's not likely to but hey I'm not saying it won't go on fire because that's how people get sued and die and things but you could run it off a battery pack in emergency. I don't recommend doing it full time or, you know, for constant use. In emergency, yes. Last important piece that I might have slightly glossed over uh, in the previous videos. The exhaust has to be vented outside. This emits carbon monoxide, the silent killer. Given enough exposure and enough time, you will die. You will actually cease to be alive. This is just a test setup. I'm in a workshop. I've got an extractor fan. Um, there's fresh air that I can open the door, you know. If you have this vented into your caravan, your workshop, your boat, you name it, enough carbon monoxide will build up, if it's sealed of course, and you will die. You will fall asleep, sleep in coma, and you will never ever wake up. So please, please people, be safe and vent it outside. Please. Please, Jesus.